Before we get into this, I'll tell you a little bit about who we are. We're a 116-year young company. Uh, started uh, 116 years ago in Midland, Michigan. And H.H. And so, and, and H. H. Dow, our founder, founder came there uh, because he found a better way to make uh, bleach, which was our first product we ever sold. So you might ask yourself, well, why the heck would you go to Midland, Michigan to make bleach? Turns out that there's only a certain number of places in the world that uh, have salt formations, and Michigan happens to have a very large salt formation. That's a key raw material in making bleach or chlorine, which is a precursor to making bleach. And so that's how we ended up there, and we're still there today. So a bleach product 116 years ago is now morphed into 5,000 products, uh, a couple of hundred manufacturing sites in over 30 countries. And we've been around and transformed through those 116 years. And, and, and initially, our enterprise risk management system was really around keeping stuff in the pipes and making sure our plants were running uh, effectively. But it's broadened since then to really encompass a lot of what Peter showed you there in terms of all the different facets of enterprise risk management. And, and lately, it's really been about resiliency, understanding that things will happen, things will go wrong, and you need to be ready for the uh, inevitable. We certainly are trying to avoid the headlines. Uh, and so the whole idea around enterprise risk management is to stay out of the headlines, at least on the negative side of things. Um, you know, and the odd thing about this, and putting this slide together, 10 years ago, you would have had to have had all black and white pictures of things that happened two decades ago and all these things. To put this slide together today, my God, this slide's even outdated, right? I could have the slide showing the Carnival cruise ship up there. Okay, so clearly they had enterprise risk management in their overall philosophy, right? They said, well, if an engine fire happens, we want to have a halon system to put the fire out. Step one. Now what? Okay, now you got 4,000 people out there. You've had an engine fire. You put the fire out. You dealt with the first is issue, unplanned event. But now what are you going to do? I'm sure that in their planning, they didn't say, well, then we'll, let's see, we'll call a tugboat out and we'll take a couple of days and we'll pull them back to Alabama. So I don't think that was part of the plan. And if it was, I'm sure they didn't anticipate the kind of negative publicity that they're getting on an hourly basis as CNN continues to remind us that there are 4,000 people out there floating, okay, because they had an engine fire, and their plan was, we'll pull them back to Alabama with a tugboat. So you got to stay out of the headlines, folks, when you're in the business, and in the chemical business, you really need to stay out of the headlines. And so we've elevated our game to include resiliency in making sure that when things happen, we can be resilient. And it, you don't have to look very far back to talk about companies that actually have had issues, had unplanned events, and then were faced with uh, situations where they really couldn't recover, whether that was Enron or, or, or WorldCom or what have you, where these companies had issues with risk management inside of their organization, and then they were unable, physically unable to recover. And what happened in those cases? Um, in many cases, uh, what, we've, what I found when I looked at an article from Bowles and Company was that 80% of the time, it was just poor mismanagement of strategic risk. So it's the executives missing an opportunity to participate in this process. You can't just delegate risk management. You have to participate because there's a, a, part, and a, a part to play for executives in this. And at Dow, we believe in that. And in fact, I participate on a team with some key executives where we're looking at corporate risk at a company level and ensuring that all phases and facets of enterprise risk management are being dealt with effectively. So really, you know, in, uh, resiliency is about bridging the gap between the, the experts that are managing the IT risks, they're managing the process risks, they're managing the R&D risks, and the senior leaders who are managing strategic risks. What markets are we going to go into? What products are we going to develop and, 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 and market? And have we really thought about, is this the right way to go as a, comp as a company? Certainly those that have had these issues and disruptions in their, in their markets and, and businesses that didn't have that fell by the wayside. And there are really three things that you really have to do. You've got to broaden your awareness and really understand what it really means to look at it at an enterprise-wide level. You've got to integrate uh, risk awareness into your strategic decision-making, and you've got to focus on resiliency. And this isn't just in the industry, in the chemical industry, or in, in industry in general. Even the governments are looking at this. And in fact, Suzanne Spalding, Deputy Homeland Security Undersecretary, in a recent speech made comments to the, the, the issues and, and the need for resilience. Okay, the ability to adapt to changing conditions and to prepare for, withstand, and rapidly recover from disruption. So they're looking at critical infrastructure across the U.S., train systems, bridges, water systems. What happens when things do break? How resilient are you? Can you make the necessary recovery happen in a fast and efficient manner? 
we partner with Homeland Security on many uh, fronts to really understand how we play a role in overall uh, enterprise re reliability and resiliency of both their critical infrastructure and our role as the largest chemical company in the U.S. So ERM uh, for Dow has really kind of evolved over a year. Initially, it was a gut feel. Boy, it sure would be good if we had this. It feels like this would be the right thing to do to much more of a data-based, rudimentary model system, uh, more proactive to today where it really is highly data-driven and highly integrated uh, enterprise-wide with resiliency built in. And this picture just shows you kind of the different layers in which we, we, we practice this. Again, at the very top, that's where a lot of companies miss the mark. If, you're, if your senior executives are not involved in strategic business management and enterprise risk ma modeling, then you're missing the mark. Um, you know, everyone practices compliance and financial reporting, uh, ERM. Everyone makes sure that their plants are not blowing up or doing things to harm the environment. Okay, but you really need those, those senior execs participating in those top three layers of this process to really have a robust system that will be resilient. And we integrate all the way through the board of directors. In fact, we've got an EH&S and sustainability board of directors subcommittee. And the senior executive team that I participate on is accountable to that group to make sure we explain to them where the greatest risks are for the Dow Chemical Company and what we're doing to put in mitigation strategies. We, of course, in turn, then turn to our uh, topic owners and SMEs to make sure that we're, they're doing the kind of risk, risk management and modeling that they need to do. And then they turn to the process owners to make sure that those processes are in place. It's a top-down, bottom-up approach. The other key part of this is that you have to be able to get information in from all different sources. Every, anyone and everyone, whether it's the 50,000 Dow employees or the 50,000 contract partners that work with us on a day-by-day -day basis, anyone can, can bring about and raise a risk that you may need to evaluate. So you have to make sure that everyone feels accountable for being a part of the process. Everyone feels accountable for escalating if they see something they don't like. That's an important part of our culture, and so we gather input from our board members, we gather input from our contract partners. Anyone who's got something they want to raise, we, we funnel that through and make sure it's been properly evaluated to raise the level of awareness on any particular risk. And you have to partner with outside organizations and come to conferences like this, really, to get your outside perspective and really understand what's happening. You can't be insular. So just like the slide that uh, Peter showed earlier, you know, it's not just about the plant, okay? It's about financial, it's about information systems, which this organization, of course, is very, uh, very aware of. It's about business management, governance, and external environment. All of these are parts and pieces and components of a robust, resilient inter enterprise management process. And around a product, then, we do manage across the life cycle. From innovation, where we've got processes in place to understand when we're first trying to invent a product, uh, to the actual planning for procuring the raw materials. You know, I'd like to tell you across the 5,000 products that we have triple redundancy on all raw materials, but that's just not true. We do have, out of those 5,000, a few that are single sourced. And that's okay, you can have that, but you better have a robust mitigation plan for if that single source fails, okay? And then you get into actual the manufacturing piece, and that's probably where we're the strongest, we're the deepest, we've been doing it the longest, keeping things in the pipe, making sure we're doing things excellent from an environmental perspective. And then you've got the product side, and there are processes in place to make sure our product's uh, risk management is in place, along with transportation risk around supply chain, and, um, and then you know, handling the product at the customer's shop, and then finally waste management. All different facets of a product life cycle that require, again, a robust set of tools in place so that you can understand the risk associated with those items and then manage the risk appropriately. Not to say we haven't been through our own stress tests. So we've been tested on many and many different uh, ways and on many different occasions. Uh, it's inevitable. You know, things aren't going to always go well. And in each, time, each time across the 116 years, we've been able to respond appropriately uh, because we've had, again, a robust set of plans in, in place to deal with the unexpected. So in today's world, some of the key factors for success, make sure you've got an enterprise-wide approach. That's, that's a given. Make sure you're anticipating the risk uh, and making sure you've got mitigation plans in place uh, before things get disrupted. Manage the risk so that as you grow, you're growing in the right direction. This gets back into strategic risk mitigation. And then make sure you're doing it better than the competition. 
Um, that's very important. It's what we were founded on 116 years ago when H.H. When Dow went into the bleach business is because he thought he had a better way to make bleach. And as he used to say quite often, if you can't do it better, why do it? And so you really need to be excellent at this to have a competitive advantage. So key, key questions to ask yourself, where are you on this continuum of getting your enterprise risk management and resiliency built into your organization? Okay, are you resilient and proactive? Or are you saying, well, step one, put the fire out in the engine room. Step two, uh, call the tugboats. Okay, so you don't want to end up in that situation, okay? Uh, are your employees, leaders, and everyone in your organization, everyone who has a potential observation to make in, in terms of risk, are they willing and able to escalate, come forward, and bring that forward into your organization? So you can evaluate it and decide what you need to do. Sometimes it's we need to do nothing. Other times it's something that needs to be evaluated and dealt with. So with that, I'll turn it back over to Peter. Thank you. Mm -hmm.